George. <laughs> George, Lu George Lucas. I don't know. That would be the best cameo. <laughs> a lot has changed since the last time we saw our celebration. It was my first one. David been to a lot. It was in Chicago, and it was uh, three years ago, four years ago. It? Yeah, wow. It was before The Mandalorian ever aired. So. I was getting to know the Star Wars fans. They knew me from my work at Marvel, I think. They knew me as an actor, but it was my introduction. Now coming back here to Star Wars Celebration and to see the appreciation that they've had for the shows that we've made, because now we've done four seasons of television, three <laughs> seasons of television since then. And, and of course, now uh, Dave is filming Ahsoka, which is uh, on Disney Plus as well, a live action show, uh, following up on the animated characters that he created along with George Lucas for uh, for the uh, Star Wars animation. We love seeing the development of all these series and how, you know, from the, the new show we're doing with uh, John Watts, Skeleton Crew, and, and but when you look at Andor and you look at Obi-Wan, you look at Mando, you look at Boba, they all do have a different feeling, a different tone, and I think that's remarkable and really speaks to the, the serialized nature of Star Wars and how it can be a very flexible uh, galaxy. I mean, it's, it is a galaxy, so there's so many stories to tell that it's exciting. But that, I don't know yet. I think that I'm waiting to see a little more as I put it together what that tone becomes because it's, it's evolving right now. It's evolving. All the shows that we've worked on, whether it's Mandalorian, Ahsoka, Book of Boba Fett, now Skeleton Crew, they all exist within the same time frame. They all exist after Return of the Jedi. So between, uh, I guess you'd say, between episode six and episode seven. There's 30 years there that's somewhat unexplored, on certainly on the screen. Uh, to some extent, it's been explored through through fiction and through extended universe stuff. So there's a, a lot uh, of room for us to tell stories. And there are a lot of characters that are in play because we know who's around at that time. And so in The Mandalorian, we begin to introduce those characters. We begin to remind people who knew them already. Or if you aren't familiar with the other work and you just are coming in through this show, we're introducing them for the first time. And this affords us the opportunity to have stories that interconnect and characters that go from one story to the other and that creates a very rich fabric for us to explore. This was gathered in the Great Purge. It is good it is back with the tribe. Yes. A pauldron would be in order. Has your signet been revealed? Not yet. Soon. Well, we established uh, in, in the Book of Boba Fett that there was uh, an opportunity for the Mandalorian to be redeemed because he had transgressed against the, the, against the Creed by removing uh, his helmet. And among his group of Mandalorians, that is something that's not permitted. Now we know that there are other groups of Mandalorians where uh, they have different sets of rules. In, in, the, in the Clone Wars we saw with Dave and also with character that I voiced that the, the Mandalorians are very different there. And so these different groups are coming together and uh, we're gonna figure out how, um, how they all, the nexus point for all of those communities, of course, is their home world from which they're exiled, which is Mandalore. You know, again, Star Wars is something that ultimately should make people feel happy. It should make you feel good. It should be uplifting and that's what I felt in that hall when people are appreciating everyone. And, and I know it's something that is just so important to the DNA of this thing. When you think of when you left the original uh, Star Wars A New Hope, the theater, people were cheering at the end. People felt great. Mm -hmm. At a time when, you know, you could argue things weren't that great mm -hmm. outside. So I think it's so important to give people this positive feeling that happens through these characters, this acknowledgement of these actors where people can come together and say basically thank you. I mean, that's all I hear all weekend if I run that's into right. people is thank you, thank you for that's this, right. thank you for that. And I think, you know. That, if, I've not heard that before and I've worked right. on a lot of things. And I don't know if it's because it's Star Wars. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's because it's been such a isolating period that we're coming out of, we're beginning to come out of now. But we were, this was very trying times. And, and um, you know, launching this new streaming service with this title that nobody had any connection to <laughs> either one. And people 
I think found a way to find community by watching things together. There would be people that would stay up and, and watch it from when it first was put on the service. So some people are up at midnight, three in the morning, depending on where you lived. And then on social media, they would all talk to each other. They would create memes. They would, they would uh, have message boards. And so I think it was a way for people to come together even though they, were, they felt very alone. And now that everybody's starting to come out and meeting each other in the sunlight again and, <laughs> and seeing that they all share common things, and that they, I really feel that there's a, a community here. And we went through Disneyland yesterday together, <laughs> yeah. and um, it was it was a Star Wars night, and it was just um, very moving to feel how much energy and excitement and appreciation there was. So much like your father. What should I do about him? Trust your instincts. I tell you, we've been pretty lucky with who Herzog, we've had. I mean, we have everyone from Mark Hamill to yeah. Werner Herzog. So Amy we, we Sedaris. Should, Amy Sedaris is, is great. But she's just Star crazy. Wars fabric now. Like, she had no idea. Now she's in it, which I love. That's right. She's awesome. But, um, I, George. <laughs> <laughs> George, George Lucas. I don't know. That would be the best cameo. <laughs> Well, You'd have to be the son of Baron Papanoida or something like that. I don't know. I wouldn't even speculate on that. <laughs> it's hard for me to imagine what that day would be like. <laughs> well, he's been on the set when Dave's been directing, so I yeah. love watching Dave and George together. Uh, George, I have tremendous respect for. I've, I've been very fortunate to have great conversations where I've learned a lot. But when I see Dave and George Lucas together, that's like a whole <laughs> lot. Because how long did you work together? 12 years? Uh, yeah, close to that. Yeah, like at least at 10 and... Yeah. I mean, it was a master class. Every day was a master class. And so I'm trying to apply that every day and, and pass on what I've learned. I mean, it is the Jedi experience I've had. And so honestly, that's probably my biggest responsibility now is to try to explain to people what George explained to me about why this all works, why it's different and unique from any other fantasy series or fiction out there. It's George lent it a unique point of view and uh, it's something that we have to take care of. and you know, work on to improve again and again and again.